Hey guys, I'm Tarek Merriface and welcome to Mayday Talk. This video became a huge hit on the internet when it first came out, and for good reason. It's incredible and a great lesson for pilots. It first came out in August of 2012. The aircraft was a Stinson 108-3. At the time of the incident, the aircraft was carrying three people and some light baggage. The airfield in the video is Bruce Meadows Airstrip, situated at an altitude of over 6,300 feet. The runway itself is 5,000 feet long. The aircraft skipped off the ground several times on takeoff as it tried to lift off before it finally managed to get a little bit of height. The aircraft was unable to maintain altitude, however, and it crashed into the trees of a forest after the airfield. The aircraft flipped onto its back and injured the passengers and the pilot. The pilot suffered the worst of the injuries, including a broken jaw, but everyone walked away from the accident. Now, this is a really interesting video because a couple of years back, I reviewed a very similar video where the occupants weren't so lucky. Now, get this. The cause for the accident is the same. It was a hot and humid day that resulted in a high density altitude situation. For those of you who don't know, high density altitude refers to the density of the air. An aircraft's lift is dictated by the formula lift equals to a half rho v squared CLS. Now the only bit we're interested in in this equation is rho. This is density, and as you can see, if the density reduces, so does the lift available. Density altitude refers to the equivalent air density to a given altitude in standard atmospheric conditions. So the higher the density altitude, the lower the density and the less lift is available. However, there is another side effect of being at high density altitude for normal aspirated engines like the one in this video, and that's power reduction. The engine produces power by mixing air molecules with the fuel before burning it. The lower the air density, the less power the aircraft produces. This results in a two-pronged attack, making density altitude a real threat in aviation. It is purely a performance figure and must be taken into account before every flight. The NTSB said that on the day of the incident, the density altitude was of over 9,000 feet. This means the aircraft was performing as it would if the plane had been flying 3,000 feet above the airfield on a standard day. The high density altitude is most definitely the main contributing factor. I see two opportunities, however, where the pilot might have been able to avert this accident. The first time would have been in the flight planning stages. Had the pilot correctly done the performance calculations as he should have, he would have noticed that the aircraft was too heavy to be able to take off safely from the airfield. The second opportunity was thwarted by a case of get their itis. During the takeoff roll, the aircraft skipped several times, a very strong indication that it's too heavy for the given conditions. Now it's granted that normally we should never abort a takeoff above V1, which is equivalent to about rotate speed in most GA single engine aircraft. However, Bruce Meadows Airstrip has a 5,000 foot long runway, making a safe abort a viable option. It seems that the pilot failed to see the danger to make the quick decision to abort, however. It is, of course, a risky maneuver, but at this point, it would have been the only safe available option. I believe the reason he insisted on continuing the takeoff was because of the pressure he had from carrying passengers. He promised them a flight and he was going to be damned if he wasn't going to give them one. This is a common occurrence and often leads to many accidents. It must be said, however, that once the pilot knew he was in trouble, he reacted the only way he could have to survive. He rode it out into the tree line, avoiding a stall and saving the lives of everybody on board. It should also be noted that the trees were also a big contributing factor for the survivability of the crash. You can see them slowing down the aircraft and absorbing its kinetic energy as it made its way to the ground. We can learn the following from the video. First off, doing the performance calculations is crucial before each flight. Second, recognize the get their itis and wanting to look good in front of your passengers can be a real pressure on you as the pilot, and you should not let it become an influence in your decision making, especially when safety is involved. And finally, when you need to ride out a controlled crash landing, try to use your environment to absorb the kinetic energy and reduce the chance of serious injury. That's it for me today, guys. Make sure to comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and check out some of the other stuff on this channel. I'm Tarek Merriface, and I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying. Quick thing, guys, I'm trying out this new green screen thing. Uh, don't know if it'll work too well. I don't think it will. I'll try my best, but...
Uh, honestly, I don't have proper lightings, so. Yeah, tell me what you think. It, should I bother continuing with this or just do my videos normally? Alright, see ya.